Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how I invented something to deal with a very niche problem. Now, even if you don't share this niche problem, which I have and I'll come to in a moment, I hope that you'll watch this very short video um, because at the end I want to try to apply it, the lessons I've learned from it, to everyone and so hopefully it will be of benefit to you even though you don't have this niche problem. So what am I talking about? Right. About a year ago, I had these vertical blinds installed. Love them, they're great, you can have shade, etc, etc. However, when you draw the blinds, once these blinds are drawn open, what, you, what happens is that both the cord and the, can you see here, and the, um, and the rod on which all the vertical blinds hang sag and droop in the middle. And, and those adjectives, sag and droop, aren't, believe me, never ever a good thing. Now, so on some level, every time I come into the kitchen, if I see the blinds like this, with this sort of saggy, droopy bit in the middle, um, doesn't make me burst into tears or furious. But it does unsettle me slightly because I look at it and I think it's, it's sagging so much. Is it one day going to sag even further and it will come out at the, of the housing at the end and the whole thing will then fall down? So I wanted to create, invent something that would sit in the middle and which would... I'm just going to create a new, in, <laughs> a new use for my remote control. Do that, so pin them up into the housing which is up above and I looked online to see whether or not there was anything that already did this and I couldn't find anything. All I could actually find, all I could actually find is this quite complicated diagram of how the whole thing fits together. However, this gave me an idea. This is the housing above into which all this mechanism sits. So I drew myself a little diagram here if you can see it on the back. This is the housing with, if you can imagine this is a cross section, this is the rod going through it and this is the housing front and back. And I thought if I can make something that goes round the rod but sits on each of these little returns on the front and the back then it can sort of skittle along with the with the vertical blinds backwards and forwards and at the same time, because it's perched on this little reveal here, back and front, it will stop the rod and the cords from slipping down. So then I decided to make myself a little prototype out of paper to see whether or not um, what the idea that was in my head was actually practicable um, in 3D in real life. So if this pen is the rod, I wanted something that, I, without dismantling the whole thing, I could slide around the rod and I put two slits in the paper, one here and one here on the other side, and then I slid them into each other like that, and that formed, I hope you can see, a little, a little paper prototype which corresponds roughly to the drawing which I had made earlier, and that would sit up in the housing holding the rod in position and I, I positioned it up in the housing and hey presto it did actually sit in exactly the right position but clearly being paper it's very fragile um, and not nearly strong enough um, to hold the weight of the rod and the cords as well so I then decided I would make the same thing again but this time out of something more durable so <laughs> I got myself a bottle out of the rubbish, which I was throwing away, which is made out of plastic. I used my craft knife here to cut it, cut the top off, and then obviously make sure it's washed out, because this was actually Descaler, which is probably not the most sensible bottle to choose. I took a panel out of the side, cut myself a strip. I cut two slots into it. You can see here and here. I slotted them together. Whoops, you'll see. And hey presto, I had a plastic version of my paper prototype, like that. 
I'm now going to put this on the rod and you can see how it works. So here you can see it, I've, I've inserted the slots one into each other and I've got it around the rod and now all I have to do is to push it up and sit this piece and that piece onto this shelf here and that shelf there, but I need two hands to do it so I'm going to stop filming and I'll show you when I've done it. And there we have it, the little, what should we call it, widget is fitted and the cords and the rod are pushed up and held firmly in the housing. Now I'm just going to pull the curtains across and what should happen is that because it's floating effectively it should just go across with the curtains. And there you are, it does, it goes all the way across. So, the problem I've created, of course, is that when you pull it back, is the widget is still back here. But for the time being, I can get a fly splitter and just bring it across. Right, there. There you are, I told you it was going to be a short video. However, this is not the end because having created what I thought was a very clever little widget and then thinking about how I can tether it to the first of these hanging pieces so that when it gets pulled back it takes that with it. Um, I then woke up in the morning that I was going to do the tethering and thought surely there's got to be something on the market for this and I found nothing on the market that does this but I did find one very old video um, and literally one video where there was a chap talking about all sorts of things that go wrong with vertical blinds and he mentioned magnets and I also happen to remember just seeing but not really paying attention to a little piece of metal at that far end and I'm going to show it to you now I'm holding this in my hand, which you might be able to tell from the shaky camera work, so just forgive me for that because otherwise you won't be able to see what I'm talking about. This is the little thing that was stuck in the corner, and I, I'd seen it out of the corner of my eye but didn't really register what it was or might be. And anyway, after I'd invented my widget, <laughs> which seemed to work, and just before I tethered it, I noticed this thing, and it does actually travel backwards and forwards, but I couldn't think how on earth that would fix to anything. And then having watched a video where a chap talked about magnets, I then thought, what is this? And I realized that that is actually a little magnet. And it seems that this <laughs> is actually what I've just invented. I have in fact reinvented the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly the wheel. I've reinvented the widget and the magnet, which I've just taken off, attaches to the first, I'll show you this, it attaches on here, glues on there, so that when this closes and touches that, it picks it up on the magnet and pulls it back with it. And then there's a screw halfway across which stops it halfway so that it then supports the rod and the cords. I'm now going to put the magnet where it should be on here and glue that, which I don't like doing because the last time I used glue, I glued myself together. Um, so I'll glue that and then we'll see if it works. Well, does it work? Hey presto, look at this. Yes, it does, but I'm going to close this because it's very sunny in this day. I can't see anything. So I have reinvented the widget, but am I disappointed, downhearted, disillusioned, or any of those other D words which are terribly sad? No, of course I'm not. I'm actually encouraged because if I hadn't started on my investigation to work out how to solve this problem, I wouldn't have recognised what the widget was when I discovered it tucked away in that far corner. 
and without my investigations I wouldn't have immediately realised that that was a magnet which shouldn't be there, it should be on the first vertical blind and then understand immediately how it worked. Um, so my investigations enabled me to discover immediately what that widget was and how it worked. So I am really encouraged because I was, I was on the right path and I could have solved that problem, but luckily it had already been solved for me. And now, every time I come into the kitchen, instead of seeing this sagging rod that looks like the whole thing's going to fall down, it all looks like it's permanently fixed and I can relax. So if ever you have a problem that gives you anxiety, like this one, you think something's going to fall down, um, that is the one to focus your attention on because really you don't want to be feeling like that in your own home. And now I come in, I don't even think about it, or if I do, I'm just pleased. So, just to recap, invention. We followed the same template. We've worked out what our problem is, what we need to do to solve it. Um, we've made little scribbles on pieces of paper, doing little diagrams as to possible answers as to how we can solve that problem. Um, we've made up a paper template. We tested it to see if that works. It did in this case, so I've made it up in um, a stronger material. I tested that, that works. Um, and I was just about to go to my next iteration of the invention, which was to work out some way of tethering it, when I discovered that, in fact, it had already existed. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up <laughs> and, and um, subscribe. There are other videos. If you're interested in invention, there are other videos on how to invent anything. Um, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>